Dave, nice, uh, nice little pop the other day. I saw that exactly that you posted uh, with Dylan. Yeah, I started betting. I don't like betting Aqueduct, but the only guy that I've won on in the last like year and a half, two years is Dylan. <laughs> so I'm being forced into just betting Dylan every race. And I've almost, I feel like I almost bet too much for like a typical aqueduct handle. So I try to stay away from it, but I just keep doing the same thing. I, I, I key box Dylan with like two or three horses. And uh, it's the only time I've won in horse racing, like consistently winning big. Like that day that I posted that, I think I had three or four winners with him. So uh, yeah, he's been unreal. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you, you like really caught it at the right time, right? Like, I mean, he he's he's one of those guys that like has been kind of always knocking on the door, and he just kicked it down <laughs> this this summer. And you just it happened to be the perfect timing for you to to be to be riding. Yeah, I, I tweeted before before the meet. This will be the summer of Dylan Davis. He rides hard. So for somebody like me, like I I, I can live with like I've never. He's never not won. I'm like, damn, he gave up on the horse. He's like riding the shit out of the horse all the way to the end. That's all I asked for for a jockey. Not all the jockeys do that. Um, so yeah, he's been he's been lights out. It's funny. So one of my colleagues on the show, uh, Richie Migliori, an ex rider, he's uh, his brother like had Dylan or still I don't know who has Dylan's look. Still has him, I think. Him, I think. Uh, yeah, still yeah, still Mig's so Mig's brother. So obviously Mig had some interest in him. And Mig said this summer he said something that I thought was interesting. He thought that. Belmont being closed, like allowed Dylan to find a rhythm because aqueducts, uh, like the circumference of the track is very similar to what it is at Saratoga, where sometimes Dylan would have this adjustment period of riding at, De at Belmont in the big sweeping turns and then coming. And he thought that like this year, he didn't have to make that adjustment. He came in hot, he started winning. And then he's, you know, it's, you know how it is. You start winning, people start riding you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your name is. Yeah. I mean, that's a theory I hadn't thought about. Um, Obviously, he's winning, 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 getting better horses. I don't know that. I mean, I was pushing the hell out of him. I'm like friends with, you know, all the trainers and owners. So they're seeing me. It's like, what is it? Even if you didn't want to notice him, it was impossible because I was promoting him as hard as like uh, I'd promote, I don't know, like Tom Brady. Like, I mean, every time, quite literally every time he hit, I would tweet like, before it even posts, it's like, oh, Dylan Davis. So, uh, yeah, it was a perfect storm at Saratoga. It really was. And he's continuing. Like I said, I haven't done a ton of aqueduct, but when I'm sitting around, it's like, all right, I got to bet on horses. Like, I'll go fuck around with Keeneland, get murdered when it was going. I was like, let me, let me, let me go back to Dylan. It's the only thing I know. So, on, on Car Talk, we talked a little bit in, in a three second clip about your kind of your origin story with racing. Um, so I, obviously you know, it's everyone's story, right? Dad took him to the track a few times, but what was your kind of adult origin story with racing? I, I feel like I remember you like really kind of getting into it during COVID, but I know you were participating prior to that, but like, what, what was kind of the turning point for you as an adult getting back in or fully into horse racing? Yeah. So I, like, I, like we said, I, my dad used to take me to Saratoga, always loved it. Barstool started growing and I tweeted out. I believe, I don't know how long ago, maybe a decade ago. Like, does anybody have a way to get me those club seats? Like the, the owner's box suites, which are difficult to get for like a normal human. If you don't know anybody, I didn't know anybody. It turns out the mayor at the time, I think his name is Scott. I can't remember. He was like a Barstool fan. He's like, you can have my box. Like when you go up there. So he gave me his box. Uh, I sat near Jordan Wyckoff, who I had never met. He was a fan of Barstool. He's like, have you ever really thought of maybe getting involved in horses, doing some stuff? I'm like, no, not really. Um, well, I should say, we bought like one horse. Me and Elio sucked. Uh, Smoke Show City ran on the West Coast. But Jordan at Saratoga, I started buying a few horses with him, his dad. Uh, uh, and, and it went well. Like, they were a pretty good group in terms of honest conservative actually but like i wasn't losing money and and I, we had a couple of horses that were fun to watch and i started going back and, and i was getting better seats i was able to like sit in that 
area. Carmen, I know past, like I go in, I give her tips. She'd give me the t- uh, tickets. You just start meeting everybody in that area, like the owners, the trainers, and a lot of our fans of Barstool. I knew the industry and I just start going a lot more, having more access. So I start going for weeks at a time. Um, I always love the place, but you know, it's an expensive place and you need to a degree, like I I was just getting everything like first class and it it really just kind of exploded how much I was there. How'd you meet Brad? I know Brad Weisbord obviously is, is your kind of your, your, your main link now. Where, where did, where did the Brad situation? Was it in the boxes? So, yeah. I mean, do you have ears? Like if you're in the boxes, you hear him chirping. It's like, who is this fucking guy? Chirp, 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 Brad, chirp, 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 chirp. Like, so you can't not know who Brad is if you're in that area. Uh, and our personalities go along. I forget how we originally met, but, you know, we just have a very, like, he, 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 two personalities that are both kind of strong, but we hit it off and became friends. Um, and, and he's a guy I've had to, like, beg him to take my money. Um, he just doesn't want it. And he doesn't want it for a couple different reasons, but he doesn't want to be the guy who, and, and I tell him, it's like, I know horse racing is a losing business. I know I'm not Mike Rapoli. I'm not a billionaire. So I get it. Like I'm expecting to lose, but here's the deal, Brad. I lost a hundred grand today at the track betting. I'd rather have a horse to show for it at the end. So will someone take my fucking money? Um, he never wants to, and he doesn't want to hear me like if he buys me a shit horse that does bad, he knows I'm just going to like needle him a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, we've had a long friendship now. And in this business, you really, if you're going to start buying, you got to trust who you're, who you're dealing with. Um, and I obviously trust him implicitly. They've done well by me. So uh, the first time I really got involved with him, I was part of like this Euro venture and he did well. He had a couple of horses that were good, but I'm such like a, um, I'm such like a, I don't, I'm an action junkie. I bet a ton and I've had a hard time telling Brad, not a hard time. It's like, I would rather spend a million dollars a year and lose it once a year for the rest of my life on a horse. I own a hundred percent. And if one of these horses is a grade one winner in the course of my lifetime, like I'm happy. Like I've had a hard time. I'm not trying to win a grade three necessarily. I just want that one dream horse. I don't want to buy it. I get that all the time. Hey, you want to come in on this horse? Like you can have a leg or this and the car, I, or to get ready before the Derby. It's like, no, I want to see the horse as a baby. I want to go as first race, second race. All So I may never get that in my lifetime, but that's what I've kind of moved towards. And that's trying what I gun towards. I also, they have to be gray. That's also put like a limit on him. I won't look at anything that's not gray. So there's a couple weird things I have going, but that's where we're at right now with him. You know, you know what though? It works out, right? Tappet was a great sire. I'm sure there's a lot of gray influence there. I just you, bought you, one. You'll... I just bought a mama. I just like honey pot. No, honey pants. And it's yeah. just a gray mama. I spent 400 grand right now in full with a Jack Christopher. Um, so I'll get that baby. And it's like once a year, we'll pick a gray horse. And if it doesn't come out gray, we'll have to sell it. But hopefully it comes <laughs> out gray. And once a year, we'll have the baby pipeline. So I've got a couple. So 100 100- a hundred percent, you'll sell the Jack Christopher baby if it's not gray. Correct. Okay. The name right. of my hey, look. the name of my farm, my stables, the Go Go Grays. Like, I mean, you can't have a non gray in there. <laughs> no, you sure can't. No, you can't. So, so how many horses? So you, you have the one brood mare. How many horses yep. do you own a hundred percent of right now? You think three or four? So I have um, Wonder Girl Carly who just went to Oaklawn and is, is probably a, a month away from knowing if ability he paid 650 grand for that one at Saratoga sale. Um, Miss apples, which is a New York bread that I think we paid three or 400 for. And then we have an unnamed one that, so I also have the name Caitlin Clark. Like I love Caitlin Clark. So they approve that. They said, they said to get a living person, name it, the person has to approve it. So I'm friends with Caitlin. She's like, I'm all in on that. Yeah, use my name. So, Gosh. but Brad, we want to make sure the horse is like good and can run. Oh my God. Yeah, of course. That, that's an awesome yeah. name. Yeah. So I'm a gigantic Caitlin. Is Miss Apples a New York bread play on Miss Peaches? I, it's one of those things. I saw the horse and I just, ooh, I'm like, that's a Miss Apples. Just like I saw Miss Peaches. Miss Apples is gorgeous. Like bright gray. Um, 
just bought recently. So young, not even close to her, like on the farm right now. Uh, so that would be, so I three in the brood mare is what I own hundred percent of. Now, do you like five years from now, do you think that's the same? You're going to be floating around five or six horses, or do you see yourself as a 20 horse guy at some point? Probably about the same. I, I think I, in my mind, it could always change. Like if Barstool like sells for billions, I'd be happy to have more. I, right now I see it like one a year. I can't really like, am I going to, because I know the odds are against you. No, like you can do anything. It's been anything. The odds that that horse you spent 650 or million or whatever, whatever that is, the odds are that horse is not going to live up to that. Like the odds are stacked. So I think it's just one a year and I'm hoping maybe two that one in my lifetime is a star. Then I'll consider that a win from baby to racing. I mean, that that's the best way to do it. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit more fun. I mean, yeah, of course, look, if you're going to really dive in like all the way in, you're going to own 50 horses. And I think sometimes in those situations, it makes sense to kind of do the pieces of things and, in you know, to try to get money off the table. But if you're going to keep it, you know, you know, kind of tight, I, I think that's a perfect way to do yeah, it. And, um, and if I'm going to do it the other way, like I get the thrill out of gambling, like, that's how I, every race is like a huge thrill for me. It's very different. Like I'm not in, I'm not in the ownership of horse racing for money at all. Like I, I, if Wonder Girl Carly stinks, it's not like she's going to be dropped down into a claiming race. She's going to go live on a farm. Like my horses are part of my family forever and they'll have good luck. Like my horses don't know it when I buy them. They're the luckiest horses in the world because they're, they're on their dad forever and they'll have a great life regardless if they can run. Yeah, no, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, and that's, I think that's the, the one interesting thing, you know, that about you and your involvement in racing and, and just, you know, the, the, your, the barstool business, the persona, all of the stuff, like there's not a person in this world that questions how much Dave Portnoy loves animals. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. And I mean, the horse racing thing, I'll get negative, people obviously because of the stigma and they'll be like how can you support horse racing with the negative it's like well like anything else there's there's bad owners there's bad people you know not not that i'm around that i'm aware of and certainly not me like i treat them truly like my pets yeah no i i completely agree it's an argument that sometimes like I, not an argument i find myself in because i'm not going to argue about it but conversation i might find myself in i just like look somewhere down the street from where you live, there's a dog chained to a fence. You go knock on their door. If you're going to bother me because yeah. it's, it, you know, but most of these horses, 98% of them are treated better than you treat your dog. Totally. They're cared for every day. They get exercise every day. They're bathed every day. They're fed every day. They're pet every day. You know, you, you, you go to work for 12 hours and leave your dog locked in a kennel, like in a cake, like stop. You know what I mean? Right. I, I just, it's look, yeah. Like you said, bad apples everywhere, but, um, you know, that's, that's the, the argument I typically have quick little interruption. If you're looking for a Christmas gift or you just like yourself, make sure you check out the JK collection at old smoke, old smoke clothing.com slash JK. You can find the saddle cloth shirt that once upon a time, Dave affectionately mentioned is one of the best shirts he's ever seen. You can also check out a bunch of other shirts that we have the short sleeve button ups. And depending on when you see this, we are releasing kid sizes now hopefully they're up now if they're not they'll be up in a couple of days make sure you check that out old smoke clothing.com slash jk the 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 fierceness thing let's let's talk about the fierceness thing for a second so i think you got your money back right did you get your money back on fierceness i, I did i i would have been up if it wasn't for that last race the classic i thought i was i thought i was home um but yes yeah i did get my money back on fear says it's crazy that Sierra Leone is the one who finally got him. But yeah, yeah. Well, we start our history with fears and starts at the Derby. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I believe I was on Sierra Leone and you just casually walk by the table. So I was bouncing back and forth, fierceness, Sierra Leone, fierceness. And you just casually walk by our table and you were fierceness. I love fierceness. You weren't even you. It, We've talked about because someone was chirping you online. You weren't trying yeah. to, to to persuade me, but I was overhearing it. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I was talking I'm, to I was, I was talking to Brad. I was like, Brad yeah, asked me, and I was right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I heard it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm back on. I'm back on fierceness. 
Um, obviously didn't run a lick in that race. Uh, and then you scored in the Travers, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I, of course. Yes, correct. So I want to know, I want to want anyways, because Sierra Leone Travers, I was on them hundred and no 50 grand. Um, and I'm obviously very, not obviously, but I'm very close with Rapoli. And Rapoli is one of those guys you just got to decipher when he says he loves his horse. Like, his lowest moment ever is there's no way this horse can lose. So you yeah. got to, like, figure out in the middle of from there's no way this horse can lose to he really can't lose. He convinced me on Travers. He's like, the horse is doing great. So we bet that. Won that. Brad is on Sierra Leone. And everyone, Sierra Leone this, Sierra Leone that every fucking time he runs. I was so sick of hearing a Sierra, Sierra Leone. It's like the horse can't run straight. He's not going to win. This past classic, I'm like, you know what? Rapoli loves fierceness again. He won me last time. I am definitely one of those people. If you win for me, I, I will probably stick with you. So I bet him. And honestly, I do agree with Mike. He ran his eyeballs out. That's the only time he's fired that he lost. The setup was perfect for Sierra Leone. I thought he was home because whenever I've seen Fierceness basically glide, which he was, he's won. So uh, they went way too fast. But I, that I could live with. It, it sucked because it was a huge bet. But he he ran his eyeballs out. Were you? Did you go to the British Cup? I didn't see you. I usually see you at stuff. I didn't. I didn't see you. Yeah, no, we were there. We we, we were we were bust by the time. The classic had come around, which is generally how Elio and I do it. We're back at the house. Um, but we were there. Yeah, no, we were there. It was cold. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, we day one. Friday was ice cold. And it's funny because if, if you're if you go to the if you go to the paddock side where the sun hits, it's not Beautiful. as bad. But on the Beautiful. front side, it's freezing. So um Breeders' Cup. Well, let's just talk events for a second here. I, I do want to get into some like gambling theory and gambling thoughts with you, but let's 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 stay here with 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 events. Um, I feel like we we share a similar feeling about uh, racetracks and events that we like. So for me, the Breeders' Cup's my favorite. It's fourteen of the best races, two days. The pools, you can't bet enough into the pools to move them. Breeders' Cup betting challenge. You can you know you can fire away and. You could you could bet ten grand on a horse, and in the next click, the horse his price goes up. It's 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 my favorite event, hands down. But obviously, any day in Saratoga, Keeneland, the Derby is great. But I I'm I'm at the I've been to fourteen of them. I'm of the belief that the Derby is so much better from the couch. So I'm retired from the Derby. Yeah, I've officially said I am never going to the Derby again. We lasted like one race there. Um, the Derby is is more of a party. I think it's cool when they play my Kentucky home, but like I'm there to bet. And when it's just constant up and down and people, it's impossible. So that was my last Derby last year. I've watched the last two on the couch. I haven't made it. I a hundred percent agree with you on the Breeders' Cup. That's my favorite two days. I look forward to it. The tournament I love. Um, and then tracks like any day at Saratoga, I, I love like Saratoga's, such a great place. I have my house getting ready there. I like the ability just to walk over, bet a couple, get to feel the track, go back in Keeneland. So we're on the same dead like ass agreement on what we enjoy. I've never, I've never been to Royal Ascot, but I have. I love that. Not for gambling though. Not for gambling, just for going. It's a great event to go to, but it's impossible to bet. Impossible. Yeah. So, because you have to go, yeah. So, so I had a friend who had a horse there. He said it was amazing. He's a he's a serial complainer about how racetracks don't do things right, and he said it was sensational. Uh, Bobby Flay's told me before it's the best hospitality event in racing. Um, I I want to go, but I kind of want to go with a friend who has a horse. I don't want to just go as like a as a stand around type. I want to go with someone who has a horse running. Yeah. But uh, I, I was I was actually surprised to hear that you loved it because I. It, it feels, from the outside, it feels very, like, hoity-toity, a little annoying. It is hoity-toity, but I, I, I'm hoity-toity, so, I mean, I, I have no <laughs> problem with that. I loved it. Um, like I said, I couldn't bet it. Like, you're not going to get me to bet first, second. Like, there's a million horses. You can't tell what the hell's going on. They don't number them correctly. There's, like, a stampede running straight. You truly have no idea. It's a social event. It's not a gambling event. I love horses, seeing them in the paddock. 
I mean, they literally, you have no idea what's happening. None. It's impossible to tell what's happening. The the one place I haven't been, you know, I haven't, I haven't been there. I haven't been to, to, to France for, for the arc and, you know, in Melbourne cup I've heard is amazing in Australia, but I have heard from a, a hundred million people that going to Hong Kong anytime on a Wednesday night and going to Sha Ten is sensational. You cannot bet enough money to move. I've heard it's amazing. I read an article recently about a guy, and maybe it was a thread, and I don't know who it was on X, saying why he only bets Hong Kong racing. And I mean, everything he said made sense. It's like big fields, big odds, can't move the money. And that's what we like about Breeders' Cup. So if you just right. kind of move that on a daily, that makes sense. I should say I loved Oakland too. I loved Oakland. Oakland's great. Yeah. No, nah, it's, it, there's, it's hard. You know, Del Mar's great in the summer. Um, you know, it's opening day at Del Mar is, is, is a fun day. And it's, I, you know, it's funny because I, I try to tell people like, you know, we went to, uh, we went to a, a Mets game. We went to a Yankees World Series game and like, it's great and it's fun and it's exciting, but it's just not the same as the racetrack. The racetrack is, it just feels more engaging. It's, 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 it's a little bit longer. It doesn't feel like you're hurting sheep. Um, what's your favorite type of sporting event to go to in, in compared, in, in comparison to racing? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, uh, horse racing by far is, is the number one thing I go to. It's hard for, like I said, it's hard for me when I'm doing like trying to do like $2,000 exactly key boxes to find days where I know I'm not just being a moron because I'm ruining my own odds. But for sports, I'll only go to like Boston events. So I love going to Celtics games. Like a front row NBA experience is pretty unique. Um, yeah, I've gone to a bunch of Patriots Super Bowls. I love those. Would I go to a regular season game at like Foxborough? Probably not. Fenway is tight, but if it's a Boston sporting event, I enjoy it. But horse racing, because of the gambling aspect, I mean, I love it. I, I Again, it is hard for me outside of Saratoga, a Maine Keeneland meet. Like if I could bet every day, I would, but you just kind of price yourself out. So let's talk a little bit about your betting personality. I mean, I know... And, 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 and obviously we can focus a little bit on racing, but I'm also interested like in just like kind of your overall approach. So are you a guy that wakes up, looks at the lines and then does a bunch of research to make decisions? Are you more of a fly by the seat of your pants? Do you find yourself um, making, you know, like, are you, did you bet a college basketball game today? Do you find yourself, who who are who is Dave? That you ch are you chasing? Are you do you find you wake up one morning and have that kind of gambler's regret? Tell me a little bit about kind of your betting personality. I know about the big picture, but yeah, the, all, you know, yes just to all of it, yes to all of it. Uh, when I'm going, I'm watching everything. So it's like games start on a weekday seven, and they're over. I don't know one or two, and I, I know every score. I know everything that's happening. Um, most of it's eyeballs. Like occasionally, I'll go in and research what's, but I already know sort of everything that's going on. I'm up to speed on it, paying attention. I'll wake up, I'll look at, like you said, I'll look at the lines, see what I like. Um, Barstool, we talk about it a lot. It depends where I am, like Florida, DraftKings is not legal. So I end up not betting nearly as much as I would when we travel for college football, I'm in. College football Saturday, I could have like 20 games, 25 grand, 50 grand each. So you're betting straight wagers and just trying to do better than 50%. Yep. And I don't expect to like I'm up this year. I think I'm up in sports two and a half million, all based on a string of futures that I hit early in the season. But I always lose like I, I always lose. I I always lose. I look, I think your future shit is brilliant for a couple of reasons. One is because because of the business you're in, it gives you longevity with content. Totally. It's like because you're not done until you're done. <laughs> And we beat the book. Like, I, I'm down a lot in my lifetime, but Barstool doesn't get sold, and a lot of things don't happen without the gambling element, which has been core. So I can sleep easy on that, but I hate losing. Like, I didn't sleep Saturday night, San Jose State uh, against Boise State. It's the worst beat in, like, the history. Like, I had San Jose State plus 14 and a half. It was my actually pick of the week. It, they were up 14 nothing. They're in the game the whole game. They're down seven, again, plus 14 and a half. 
Boise State has the ball. San Jose State 30 gets stopped. So it's still a seven-point game. My ball, seven minutes left uh, in the game. I go to sleep because I'm exhausted. I go to bed earlier. I wake up 1 a.m. And every gambler knows this. You just check the scores, like see what happened. And they lose by 21. Yeah. And it's like, all right. Instantly, I'm like, something tragic happened in this game. Like, they were down seven with the ball seven minutes to go. How do they give up two touchdowns? Makes no sense. Pick six with a minute 50 to go. I'm like, yep, tragic, knew it. I get a text from Big Cat Dan, who gambles. like, did you see the end of that game? He had San Jose State. I'm like, yeah, pick six. He goes, no. After the pick six, San Jose State drove it to the one with 45 seconds left. Down 21. They ran the ball on first down. The worst run in the history of college football. The guy just went down. So second down, they throw a pass. Tackled at the one. So it's running down, third down, sacked in the game. In the history of college football, first and goal from the one, three plays, down 21. You don't score after pick six. So, yeah, I'm a normal gambler. Like, that's I didn't sleep that night. I'd probably get a cold. Now, do you what, – what kind of what kind of, what kind kind of of better are you when you're watching? Are you one of the – are you the optimistic type, calm, no, we got a shot here, we're going to do, 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 or are you one of the skies falling when you're watching? Sky's falling. Yeah, sky's falling, <laughs> in it, but it really depends. Like, if I'm just – which I know I should do. If I'm just maintaining the same unit, if I'm like, all right, there's a one unit play. I did 21 unit plays. You're never going to hear me like sky is falling or overly because it all comes out in the wash. It's not the end of the world one way or the other. Occasionally, I'll go like 10 units, 20 units. Then it's the the, the world is falling. I don't trust it till it's triple zero, game over. There's no way I'm going to win this. If you like, I've gotten serious fights with like, you jinxed it. You changed the momentum. I'm one of those guys. So what about racing? What's your, what's, what's your, what's your, what's your betting personality racing? And, and you're a, you're a reflective guy too. So like what, and what, what do you not do well when it comes to betting horses? I mean, honestly, I, I, I pretty consistently lost till this, till this Dylan situation, which has, just been the best success I've ever had. Um, what I, I uh, it's similar to, which I still will do in my mind, similar to um, sports gambling. I don't think you should be changing. Like if I'm doing a exact, a key box and I box it, I shouldn't be going back. Well, I put him on top or, and then the next race I'm boxing it. Cause you never, hit it right that way. But sometimes you're like, why didn't I just do it cold? But I think you got to stay the same type of bet consistently throughout, not going up, not going down on value for the most part. But even I don't follow that. Like I always look at it, you know, if there's 10 races and you hit one of them, that's 10 to one odds and you're betting the same, you have a free day. Like that is how I think yeah. you should look at it. Good luck following that. I don't follow my own advice, but that is, I think I should look at it. Do you play pick fives and pick fours and stuff? Or what do you do in that? Stop doing it because I people say the value's there, but it, I, I haven't got it right in my head because I bet so much on my individual races. So if I hit uh, one of my exacta keys, I can win as $2,000. Like I, I can win anywhere between 40 and 150 grand that race. To win that on the pick five, like, you have to bet it a million times against your own pool. So it, it, yeah. it doesn't make much sense for me to do it in hindsight. The problem with the pick five to me is that I've recognized and it's hard. It's impossible to try is that of those five races, I am going to be dead. eyed dick on four of them, but there's going to be a random result that I couldn't find if you told me the result. And so I have to try to predict which one of those races is going to be the random result that I was never going to find and go all. And it's, it's, it's yeah. And I, and, and, but then it's, yeah, but then, but then you know what happens when you go all the favorite wins. Right. And now you're upside down from an equity standpoint. And it just, it's, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's some, there's some interesting ways, interesting ways to kind of get around that, but it's not the easiest. My, yeah, my, my betting, just how much I bet just doesn't make sense for those because betting more yeah. doesn't mean you win more. Because no, you you may no. just cut your pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Brad screams at me for that. Screams at me. 
I think there is like there's a style. I have a friend who uh, is a professional better that a horse player that has this kind of interesting style that I think actually kind of fits what you do a little bit, which is bet the horse to win that you like. Okay, so bet Dylan to win. Then bet an exacto with the three likely winners with Dylan in second. And then bet a try with the three likelies in first, the three likelies in second, and then Dylan in third. Like basically you're keying the, the horse in all three positions, but you're doing it where if you hit the try, if he runs third, you hit the exacto if he runs second, and you hit the win bet if he wins. And and I, I think that kind of fits the way you play, especially with 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 the Dylan thing, you know what I mean? And And you could, you know. Listen, I'm happy with the way the Dylan method is going. I mean, it, it it's crazy. Like I, it's just crazy. He he's he's seemingly like first or second, like fifty percent of the races, and he's not going like the one that I tweeted the other day or put on X. He was sixteen to one. I think he had a seven to one winner that day. He had like a nine to one second. So, God bless him. Can you bet a horse race and not watch it? Oh yeah, I and I can do the reverse. I can watch horse racing without betting. Yeah, I can watch it without betting, but I can't. I can't. I don't care where I'm at. You know, I was at my. I played in a contest like six, seven years ago. I was at my. I was at my 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 sister's wedding, sitting in the front row, and there was an inquiry. I was in. A, I was in a big contest. It was. It was significant, and I was in an inquiry, and they were doing like the final prayer. And my thank God, my dad's a horse player. We were. I was on the phone. I. I got. I got. I, I can't. My br- I'll go crazy. I'll go crazy yeah, if I can't watch it. <laughs> it does suck. I mean, there's two different. So you can go back. Like I, I use DK Horse. If I have to go watch on TVG, so my count doesn't change or something, I can do that and go watch the replay. The thing is, it's like in my Dylan phase. If I just know I can't watch the horse race, I'm not going to sit there and not because when I go back and check the results in Dylan one, I, I'd want to like kill myself. So. Uh, it, uh, I, if I know, hey, I'm going to be out of pocket for an hour and a half. Let me just go see what Dylan's on. I'll just go pre pre do it. So, Dave, like, I mean, I mean, obviously, you've you found. Um, I mean, I think you're, you know, the, the success of the barstool. You've you've really found and understand it, it to a certain extent. Obviously, the the gambling, um, sports media, sports marketing, gambling marketing. From as an outsider and, you know, and actually an insider now, but like as a person who's not, this is not your main business. What do you think if, if I gave you the keys right now, Hey Dave, here are the keys. And what, what, what do you think that horse racing gets wrong, gets right, needs to do different? You don't understand. Why are they doing that? What, what are your, if I gave you the keys and what, what would you do to, to, to help racing kind of become mainstream? Yeah, I, I think the things they do very well, the days they do very well, are, are they do very well. Like, you know, my assistant went to Aqueduct on like a Friday out of the clouds. She's like, I don't get what you like about horse racing. I'm like, where'd you go? She's like, I went to Aqueduct. I'm like, who the fuck took you to Aqueduct? Like on a Friday. <laughs> like, like, what are you doing? And, and she knows. She's like, I don't get how you do it. So, you know, I know you need racing. But if you look around, the places that do these short meets, Keeneland, Saratoga, Oakland, Oakland, like those always kill. And anyone going to those are going to have a great time. I think they're antiquated with the betting. Like there should be a lot more easy ways to bet, even odd, like match rate, just stuff that's simple. From what I've gathered in dabbling in the sports gambling world, it doesn't talk to the horse racing world. Like when I was still with Penn, there'd be all these things. I'm like, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? They're like, you can't. Like, even shared wallets is like a big advancement. So there's, I don't know what that's about. Like, why why can't I parlay a football pick with a horse and things like, I? you can't. Um, easy, like roulette style, very simple. Like roulette style, you know, Pick the first, if there's nine horses, you get one through five and five through nine go the other way. So to simplify it and make it more for a novice gambler, the days, horse racing knows how to do the days when they're right. There's a lot of shit days. I don't really have the answer because it's a huge industry on like what you do with that. But those festival things, they're great. And there's nobody that I've ever been or taken 
to what I know is great horse. Like, no one ever goes to Saratoga. It's like, oh, I don't like Saratoga. Of course you like Saratoga. What's not to like? Um, Keeneland. So that that's it. It's combining those two. And, and I mean, the long days, why there's an hour and whatever in between the races, that's crazy. They shouldn't do that. Should make it faster. But overall, there's a lot of things right with horse racing, but they could definitely try to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest one for me. I've always said is like the, 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 you know, if, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a baseball fan, but I went to the, to the Mets game and, and, and I, and I bet for, for the Mets to win and for Lindor to get a hit. I don't know. I don't know shit. I just know that that guy plays my girl when he comes out. He seems like a nice guy. Fun. It's a million more options. Nope. Can't do that in racing. Like you can't show up there and even, I mean, you've done it a million times and I've done it a million times. Trying to explain to someone what an exact the box is takes at least seven sentences. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy that they don't have simple, like, again, I say use roulette style, but something that is so simple to follow, easy to follow, but they don't have it. I mean, how much fun would it be to like be able to bet at Saratoga to go to a day at Saratoga. If you're a, if you're a big sports better, right? You know, you're betting 1500, 2500, 20,000 a game or whatever it is to be able to bet. I rad minus one and a half against Flavian Pratt. I mean, how much fun would that? It's an entire day of action of fun and you're rooting for I rad. You're in it, you know, and then all oh, Flavian got one and now you need. I yeah. Simple it's, things like that. I, I haven't understood it. I haven't, understood the difference even between the racing commission and like what sports gambling, why they can't coexist. And that's it's never made. Like I, I always want to do Kentucky Derby like promos that somehow tied in. Like if you do this bet, you get this horse in the Derby that like you can't do it. It, it. You're not allowed. Well, the problem with racing is, and not to get on this soapbox, but like there we, the racing, most of the entities in racing are not interested in making the pie bigger. They're worried about their piece of the pie. And so, like, you know, Churchill Downs is very protective of the Derby and Breeders' Cup is very protective of the Breeders' Cup and Saratoga. I mean, everyone's guilty of it. But, like, the, the problem is that the, 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 the reason we can't have that the 50-50 sports bet types is because of takeout. Because the takeout is 17% for other bets. And there you can't have a 17% 50-50 takeout bet. So you it ends up being where you need the takeout to be reduced and no one has the, 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 the foresight and the vision that it needs that it should come down so that we can. Yeah. That's going to be like an easy thing to figure out. It has to be. I know it's crazy. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's frustrating. Um, be, before we get out of here, um, you know, everyone loves, a. I I fucking hate bad beat stories because everyone's had them and, but give me a good, give me a, give me a good beat story where you where or not a good beat, but a reverse where you, you, you're a big score where it didn't look like it was going to happen, but you pulled I'm it. I'm going to say, well, a gambler, I don't remember any of the good beats. I only remember like the bad ones. I, again, Dylan, I'll say this, Dylan on a four horse. I forget the name during the summer at Saratoga. Jackson maybe was the name of it. This horse is in last place by half the track came up the rail out of nowhere and won. That was a big win. Sports gambling. Oh man, I I only remember the bad. Isn't that how every gambler like the good never happens? I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, do you do you do you stew on it, or how how quickly do you turn the page? It all is related to how much I bet. Like, I mean, I, my San Jose story, I told earlier, that was one unit. I didn't sleep. Like that just bothered me. Um, different things. It's weird. This is going to sound degenerate. I stew more over the games I like. And for whatever reason, didn't get the bet in. Like if I miss, if I'm like five minutes late, and they, that drives me. I'd rather lose like a hundred games than not have action on a game. I won. I don't know why that just drives me absolutely bananas. So how about this one? This is because I, 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 I'm contrary and I think to most gamblers when it comes to this. If I don't get a wager in or if I lose the first leg of a pick five or the first leg of a double, I most people don't want to see it win. I want to see the ball go through the hoop. Which, which way are you? Oh, if I don't get it in, I want to lose. It's like I placed the bet. So you're saying you're the opposite. 
Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to. I, no, I'm okay. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, no. I, I, if I don't get the bet in, I'm praying it loses. And then I'm like, oh, I'm hot. So I'll go bigger the next. Like, oh, I just won, even though I didn't. So I'm going to double because, like, I'm hot now. Yeah, I'm the opposite. No, no, it's 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 a three point shooter's mentality for me. Like, if I'm out here shooting, I want them to go in. And 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 if you know, even if it's after the whistle and I shoot it, I want it to go in because I want I want to know that I'm seeing the ball right. Oh yeah, no. Like even if I'm at the the track and like if I get bobbed in the first race, I, I'm like, all right, let's go home. Like it's it's done. Like that. I and I'm generally right. It's like that that was our chance we lost. Good game. See you guys next week. Like it's all I never leave, but I always wish I should have done it. Like if I lose a head bob, it's forget about it. Game it is, it is the worst day ever. It always is. Well, Dave, what futures do we have cooking on, on the way out here? What, what what are we rooting for? What are we thinking about? I'm thinking about putting 1.5 million to 2 million on the Lions. They're about plus 350. I think they've separated. I think they've legit separated. Now, I may not early because I don't know how much lower it can go. The NFL injuries, like, this is such a big part of the game. So that would suck if, like, golf gets hurt next game. I'm sitting here with this. But I really think they are a distinct favorite. I don't think I think they're in a league of their own right now. It's early in the season. But, like, if, if the playoffs start now, I think they're even money. That's how much better I think they are. How They're, they're in the seat for the one seed, right? Yep. Who, 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 so the second seed would be who? Philly, maybe. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a week. I mean, the, the NFC's weak. Because all you really want to do with a bet like that, in my opinion, is get to the Super Bowl. And then you can hedge out if you need to, right. And they'd probably be favored. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I love them right now. Uh, so that's, I've been, I've been mulling that one in my, in my brain. I really think they're, they're plus 350 on DraftKings. I think that's great right now but again There's some synergy there for you too with michigan right yeah yeah it, injuries just is such your i mean that's part of the bet you're like you know quarterback goes down and you're, you're in trouble what about college basketball you're gonna do you gonna do anything college basketball i probably will closer i have i took alabama i put 100 grand on alabama 10 to 1 to win football oh football. I think that, yep yep they're 10 okay. to 1 at least they were when i did it two weeks ago i don't know if they still are yeah 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 yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun. The, the future shit, it's, it's, it gives you a long-term route. i never done it, and then I got white hot, like white hot at the beginning of this year. I think I won. I, I had a million on Michigan in the Rose Bowl because I went there. They won. Then I put 500 on, uh, and these are all huge bets for me, uh, uh, Washington against Texas. They won. So I'm up. Mm. Then I'm like, all right, I'm up. Let me take, what was next? Uh, Scotty Scheffler in the Masters, four to one. One. You had UConn too, right? UConn. Four to one. I put 600 grand, 2.4 million. Celtics. I did a hundred grand parlay. Scotty Scheffler at the RBC Celtics to win a hundred grand and win 1.6 million. So hot, hot. I think it was up 8 million at one point. It's down to 2.5. So that's how we go. <laughs> that's how it goes. Yeah. Dave, I, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're happy to have you in racing. Uh, we, we appreciate your, your, your reach and what, what you do for the sport. I'm good for the pools. Yeah. It, it, that, that, that <laughs> works too. The pools. Generally dead money, but not with Dylan, but in years past. Yeah. Well, good luck with these grays. You gotta, you gotta get on and when we get off, you gotta get on a reserve, uh, like, you know, peaches and Pete or Pete and peaches. You gotta, you gotta get some peaches names. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. Uh, I got to talk to him. I do it on how I see them. They, they just jump out to me. So there you go. Oh, right. before we go, the house is going to be ready next summer. Should be, should be done January. Very excited. That's exciting. Awesome, man. Yes. Thanks. I appreciate you taking the time. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See you. Thanks for tuning in to JK plus one. Thanks to Dave for participating. Thanks to our friends at Qatar racing. If you want more from in the money in terms of horse racing, make sure you hit this subscribe button. I don't know. It's in one of these two places.